The Syrian conflict has become increasingly complex in recent months. Um, the, the conflict on a nationwide basis is represented by a multitude of different theatres of battle. Um, there's over a thousand insurgent units currently active across the country. Uh, another additional aspect to the complexity is the increasingly prominent role of external um, interests and external backers in the conflict, and that's both on the s side of the of the government and in s on the side of the opposition. Um, in addition to that, the the, the armed opposition has become uh, increasingly well armed, and as a result of that, the fighting in itself has become increasingly intense. So, as a result of that, um, unfortunately, we're in a situation now where there is no seeming and discernible end to the conflict itself. The insurgency certainly has changed in recent months. Uh, the, the real turning point was the chemical weapons attack, which struck the Ghouta suburbs of Damascus on the 21st of August. Um, approximately a month after that, the United States and Russia signed a political agreement whereby the Syrian chemical weapons stockpiles would be, would be uh, destroyed in, in the coming months and years. As a result of that, the, the agreement, the US-Russia agreement, was seen uh, on a wide basis across the opposition as an incredibly negative development. And as a result of that, we've seen a, a number of developments in, in recent weeks whereby the core players in the insurgency have condemned the Western-backed Syrian National Coalition opposition grouping. Um, and as a result of that, there are moves at the moment towards establishing an alternative um, coalesced opposition grouping that will, would essentially compete or negate the Western-backed opposition that we've seen develop over the last 18 months. The influence of Al-Qaeda-linked groups in the Syrian insurgency has also increased in recent months. Um, the, there are currently two Al-Qaeda-linked organizations active in the insurgency, and that is Jabhat al-Nusra and the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, the latter of which has only been an armed uh, part of the insurgency since April or May this year. Um, combined, the two groups currently constitute approximately 12,000 fighters distributed across the country, um, with a particular emphasis on the north and partially in the east. Um, with re specific regards to Jabhat al-Nusra, um, it's been a, an, an interesting trend to see that group um, in recent months nearly being accepted as a mainstream actor within the insurgency, um, whereas uh, uh, conversely the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant has emerged as a far more extremist actor on the ground. Um, their influence in northern Syria has expanded dramatically in recent weeks um, and they currently control a number of towns um, and, and one city in northern Syria. The conflict itself has no discernible endpoint as, as things stand and the main trend with regards to the insurgency itself is the, the, the seeming development that we're seeing now whereby the Western-backed opposition is appearing to lose power and strength and influence on the ground every day. As a result of that, I expect the insurgency will become uh, or will move towards being a body represented increasingly by Islamist actors um, with some extent of influence by Al-Qaeda-linked groups on the periphery. Um, and as a result of that, I do, I do see the, the influence of external backers from Gulf states um, increasing uh, to the detriment of, of any influence that the, the Western states may have had uh, on the opposition as a whole.